Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Adam Steele here, resident music nerd. Um, we're going to be talking about audio production today, but on as low a budget as we can possibly get. So, w without compromising quality. So, let's say that you're starting off from nothing, and you want to produce music. You literally have nothing. Not a laptop, not nothing. Uh, the way that I was thinking about starting to begin recently is using a Raspberry Pi. It's a tiny little computer. In fact, this is one of them. I got this this week. Tiny little thing. And this is something I'm going to be talking about today. So in this first part, we're going to talk about how we're going to get this up and running, what it is, how to get things set up, and we're going to talk about using Reaper, which, if you've not heard of Reaper, it's a digital audio workstation. It's kind of like Pro Tools. I think it's better than Pro Tools. I've made a couple of videos about this. Uh, check those out. And also, it's much, much less expensive. You can use it for 60 days for free. And then it keeps working after that, but if you want to pay for it, it's $60, which is really cheap for what it does. It's really incredible. And the Raspberry Pi, the reason I'm doing this video is this, if I take the top off, this was just released. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus. It's a quad-core processor on it that's really kind of fast for the size of this thing. It's got a gigabyte of RAM on there. And it cost me £35, so less than $50. Now, what else do you need to run one of these? So you need one of these, so that's £35. You need a power supply that you can get from the same place as you would buy one of these. Uh, this, I think I paid £8 for. This is a universal power supply, so this runs on anything from 100 volts to 240. So this works in any country in the world on mains. Uh, you'll need to get the specific end that plugs into your, where your plugs are, but it will work. You also will need a micro SD card because this thing doesn't boot off a hard drive. Um, this, of course, you'll have seen these around probably. This is an SD card and they're fairly small, but if you look at it in my hand, it's small. But what you actually need is this little bit inside here. This is a micro SD card. Look at how tiny that is. Now, a lot of bundles that you get for the Raspberry Pi come with a micro SD card, usually 8 gigabytes. I recommend getting a 16 gigabyte card minimum to run with this. I went with a 32 gigabyte card. This one from SanDisk cost me £15. So, relatively affordable. So, all in, I can't have spent more than... Oh, and I got a case for it as well. The the black case, uh, this is called a hat case because it comes with kind of a, a lid you can take off. And I got that because you can add things on top of the Raspberry Pi with all these gold pins. And I might do that in the future. I might not, but this case costs £6 or something. They're cheap. It comes with four USB slots and it's got, a, I think it's gigabit Ethernet. It's fast anyway. Although the Raspberry Pi 3 and 3 Plus come with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth inbuilt anyway. So even if you're not willing to use a hardwired Ethernet connection, you can just turn this on. And when you get to the bits we'll talk about later, it will just go, Oh, there's Wi-Fi. Do you want to connect? And you can sort that out like you would anything like a phone or anything else like that. So, this has it also has, just worth mentioning, uh, HDMI. A full-size HDMI output, so you can use this with any TV, any monitor that takes HDMI. And it's also got a 3.5mm output jack so that you can hear audio if you're not using the sound through the HDMI. So, Reaper, let's talk about that briefly. The, the reason that this video was inspired was that uh, Reaper, if we go to the download page, up until now has been for Windows or OS X. And very recently, this changed so that there was also Linux. So there's Linux uh, i686, which is 32-bit, 
X664, which is the 64 bit, and then this one over here, ARM V7L, which that doesn't have to mean anything to you. All that boils down to is this is made for the Raspberry Pi, which runs on a different kind of processor. To so, moving back to this. So, if we want to use Reaper on here, first we need an operating system to run that on. So that SD card, the, the reason that I've got my laptop here in front of this desktop computer is that one thing you need is an SD card reader. Um, you can borrow one from a friend, uh, you can get a really cheap one, you can get ones that are tiny little USB things that can run just the micro SD card for two pounds. Uh, but if we're doing this on a budget, you could just borrow one. I've got an SD card reader in the desktop machine, but it's so old it seems to have died. So I'm using the one that's inbuilt into this laptop. So if we plug that in, I've been using this for... I've been using this inside the GoPro, so there's nothing on it right now. So what we want to do first is get a program called SD Card Formatter. This is really good. I mean, you can format the um, SD cards with Windows or with uh, Mac OS OS X, uh, but chances are that you know something might go wrong with using it with a Raspberry Pi. If I was to use the SD card formatter, this will very definitely give me something that will work. So this 32 gigabyte card it comes up capacity 29.72 gigabytes. Quick format, volume label, I'm not that bothered, so I'm just going to hit format. It will erase all data on this card. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Da -da -dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum. Okay, so FAT32, giving me a load of numbers. We don't really need to know what those are. Okay. Now, uh, the operating system that we're going to use is called Raspbian. It's a version of Linux. Uh, it's, it's short for Raspberry Pi Debian. So Raspbian. But you don't need to know that much about Linux. I mean, it's cool to learn stuff because Linux is getting bigger and bigger. But the the main points here are it's easy to install, it's free, and it's, you know, it's really just kind of the behind-the-scenes thing for what we're going to use to get Reaper running. So uh, what I searched for was a program called Noobs, which is, you know, Noob is quite often considered an insult in the gaming world, uh, but it, here it stands for new out-of-box uh, software. Yeah, so if we click on the, the Noob's installer, I personally like to get Noob's Light because Noob's Light, if you've got a network connection there, you just drop the files from this onto the micro SD card, so I've hit download, it's downloading there, so I'm going to open that up when that's ready. And I'm going to open RSD card here, and I'm just going to drag and drop all of these files from Noob's Lite onto this drive. Now that's it in terms of what we need the computer for. So, I mean, you know what I was saying with, oh, you don't need a computer or you can't afford a computer. You can do this on a friend's machine. You can, you know, if you've got to find an SD card reader, you could probably do this at a local library or something. You don't have to own a computer to do this because that was all we needed the computer for. That was it. So, let's close this down, close that down, and eject that card which hardly has anything on it. And then we'll get to using noobs. Once you've got noobs on the SD card, and actually when you're ordering a, an SD card and a Raspberry Pi and everything together from places like the Pi Hut, which is where I ordered mine from, you can get them with noobs pre-installed so that you don't even need a computer at all. It'll just turn up in the mail and it's ready. You stick the SD card in, you turn it on and you go. So, from here, I'm going to plug the Raspberry Pi's HDMI input port to what, what could be any TV, any monitor. In this case, I'm attaching this to my capture device so you can see what I'm doing. But, generally speaking, you can plug this into any monitor, any you know, anything that's got an HDMI input, it should work. And I'm going to grab the cheapest 
keyboard and mouse that I could find, which are not particularly spectacular. I mean, if you can find some of these that are just going spare, free, great. Um, you can get these new for five pounds, so it's not exactly going to break the bank. So, uh, what else do I want? Oh, that's right. So, I want. I want to pull over here. Uh, an Ethernet cable because I don't trust Wi-Fi if I can help it. So I'm going to plug that in. Although if you're on Wi-Fi that works absolutely fine. And then last but not least I'm going to get this uh, micro USB power supply. I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to plug in the uh, Raspberry Pi side first. I'm going to lean over and plug this in and we should suddenly have signal. We have lights, and we have signal. Okay, so first thing we see is this rainbow screen. That's Noob starting up and doing its thing. So we can see it's uh, copying boot files to storage. It's going to do a lot of stuff that can be kind of scary, but you know, I've picked a big enough uh, SD card here that we don't have to worry. Now this is basically giving us a choice of what operating system we want to install. So there's a few here, there's uh, Lacquer, the DIY retro emulation console, well that sounds like fun. There's Libra Elec which basically makes uh, Kodi. There's a few on here but the one we want is Raspbian. You can have more than one and it will do all the technical things like, uh, what do you call it, like changing partition sizes and all that kind of thing it will do all that for you so you don't really need to know how to do any of that super complicated stuff uh, but we just want Raspbian so in that case we're just going to click that and click install and um, if we hadn't plugged in an ethernet cable here it would be asking us about what our wi-fi network was what our password was and you would just do that as you would on any other device so we just hit install any existing data on the drive will be overwritten. That's absolutely fine. That's entirely the point here. So now that's going to download four gigabytes of stuff, which is quite a lot. Um, if you're in the kind of country where the uh, internet's rather slow, uh, make sure you've planned out an evening for it to just tick along and do this. Uh, it will do it itself. You don't have to worry about any prompts or anything at this point. And one thing that I'm, I will talk about at this stage is that this is a relatively fast processor in this Raspberry Pi 3, but the thing that will slow you down from here is the speed of the SD card. I got one of SanDisk's Ultra uh, ones, which I think are the kind of the red and silver ones. Uh, I was using just a plain old black cheap 8 gigabyte card before this and it was excruciatingly slow, really slow. And I don't know if it can handle it, but if you get one of the like, extreme gold versions of the cards, it would probably load up even faster than it had done in the past. Another clev clever thing that's worth noting is it says nearly 4,000 megabytes written here, but it doesn't have to download that much it downloads it as like a compressed file and then does the rest and unzips it and does all that stuff itself so you're probably only looking at one and a half gigabytes maybe two so if you're worried about data caps it's not nearly as much also if you were going to download noobs somewhere else that didn't have a data cap rather than getting noobs light if you got the full noobs that comes with uh, raspbian included there and it will do all the install and all that kind of stuff uh, without needing an internet connection. I've done it this way round because for me this is handy doing it this way. Okay, OS is installed successfully. Let's hit OK, wait for it to reboot, and then see what it tells us now. So now we get a few uh, raspberries in the corner and lots of text flying by. I have no idea what that means. I'm fairly techy and I'm looking at it going, okay, yeah, cool. But within a few seconds, we get welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Yes, okay, so a few things to set up. Uh, tell it what country you're in. Uh, setting location, please wait. 
Uh, it's got a default password of Raspberry, uh, so you will want to change that password to your own. Uh, I'm just going to leave it default for now because I'm likely going to just wipe and reinstall this anyway. Um, select Wi-Fi network. I can skip because I'm on uh, hard wire here. And then check that it's up to date. This is quite important. Uh, it's good to make sure that your operating system has all its files up to date for security, uh, safety. Basically making sure that the bad things are not going to happen. Uh, do you notice around the, the edges of this screen is a big black bar as well? Uh, that's under scan. So uh, the next chance we get, we're going to change that. We're going to make the whole thing full screen. I think that's so that if you use this on a TV, uh, then you get... Because TVs have this thing called overscan where they make the image a little bigger than it actually should be where a computer monitor doesn't do that so for a computer if on a tv you don't want to be losing uh the really important stuff like the title bars or start menus or whatever it is uh but you can change that setting relatively easily so you can see it's downloading updates so it's not going to take too long uh, at the end of this it'll ask me to reboot and so we'll come back when that's done I did also get, which is worth talking about, a, a heat sink for the processor on this Raspberry Pi, uh, but I can't find it. I was going to show you this on screen. I only got a short one, but you can get taller ones that take the heat better because if this thing gets really hot, it can slow down a little bit. However, um, this area has been tidied up by my other half, which means that it's disappeared into the ether, never to be found again. So I'm probably going to have to order a new one and then when that arrives, install it and then the second that I install it, I'll turn around and the original heatsink will be there where it was all along because that's that's how it works. Would you believe it? I actually found it. Uh, I found this. I went digging while it's installing the updates there. It's a tiny little heatsink that I've got. It's only a couple of millimetres tall. Uh, it should go some small way to helping wick some of the heat away uh, i would have got a taller one than this they do ones that are like a centimeter tall or more uh, but i figured that at some point i might want to get something that goes on top of the raspberry pi they call them hats i mean like very much like a hat that you would wear uh, and that uh, would obstruct it and would stop it and the metal would touch and cause all sorts of horrible problems so i've just taken the adhesive off here I'm just going to place it on top of the silver Broadcom processor chip. I can already feel it getting warmer. But that there, because of the fins on that, should help to take some of the heat away. And I think I paid a pound for that. So again, they're not expensive. I think it's something like two pounds for the big ones. But they make sure that some of the heat can escape at least. And so some more of the processor can be used because it's not overclockable i don't think the three plus because it already runs at 1.4 gigahertz as a quad core as a kind of a mobile style device i mean this thing's pretty much on par with a modern smartphone but yeah they're damn fast so they get really hot so to avoid any unnecessary slowdown yeah get a heatsink if you're interested, while these updates are in installing, if you want to see how the temperature of your process is doing, at the top here, if we go to add remove, if we right click on the bar and then go to add remove panel items, it tells us what panel applets we have available. I'm going to move that so we can see the updates installing. And if we click add, uh, we can find in this big list of things the temperature monitor. So if I add temperature monitor in and then put that, I'll move that up so that it's next to processor usage. In fact, I'll put it next to that spacer. We can see that the processor is running at 56 degrees, which is quite warm. That's in Celsius. 56 degrees, 57 degrees C. Hopefully that heat spreader that I've put on there is helping. 
If I just blow on this a little... That's already gone down to 54 just with me blowing on it. So, uh, that uh, heat sink is obviously doing something. There you go, 53, it's going down now. System is up to date. So it's asking to reboot, so off we go. So every time we restart here, it's taking a little while, but at least it doesn't take too long. Uh, Noobs is doing this quick enough. And uh, we just went into the Raspberry Pi configuration and chose to disable underscan, which was that horrible black bar. Oh, there we go. Pro that I'm recording. It seems to stop recording, so I'll quickly show you that when that comes in. Ah, yes, you can see this goes all the way to all the corners now. If you go to the top left, go to Preferences, Raspberry Pi configuration. In here is a, a setting for underscan, which I then disabled. You can set your resolution, uh, which there's a big load of settings there, but the one that I seem to have settled on uh, by default is the one that works best. There's all sorts of stuff you can disable or enable here. So you can say, you know, we'll, we'll talk about these maybe in another video because this is stuff we don't really need to know for uh, what we're doing. So let's go to the internet. So if we go to the internet, Chromium web browser, it, it, it's Chrome essentially, but it's kind of like cutting edge version of Chrome. It takes a little while to load up because it's loading off an SD card. But as we can see, well, let's I'm not using duck duck go looking for go away. Okay, so we have full web browser and everything on here, which is nice and useful. So we want to go to get Reaper now. So that's Reaper.fm. So if we go to download Reaper, which is the top left, and then down to Linux, we can see it's experimental builds. That's kind of fair. I mean, it's only been out for Reaper for a week, two weeks. So we want to download the version that says ARM V7L. That's the Raspberry Pi compatible version. And yes, 7.3 megabytes. You read that right. The entire of Reaper is tiny. It's less than 8 megabytes. It's crazy. So if we click on that to open it. There we are. We can see that. So let's close down Chromium. And let's open a folder. Let's go into downloads, why not? And just drag this folder, Le Reaper Linux ARM v7, out and extract it like you would a zip file or anything. So that's now out of its file. So you can actually just run Reaper straight from here. But what we really want to do is install it. So we'll, talk, we'll look at the readme another time. The install-reaper.sh, what you want to do with a .sh file, that's a terminal script. That's something that is very common in Linux. So what you want to do is right click on it. Ah, so if, if we just go to open it, it gives us a choice to execute or execute in terminal. That's what we want to do is execute this in terminal because then it gives us choices and that kind of thing, which we can see. And we want to be able to do all of this stuff. Now I'll zoom in here because this is pretty important stuff. Uh, but you can see the choices are run Reaper without installing it, install Reaper, view the README of course, add desktop integration. No, what I, will, what I want to do is I want to install it. So if I go to I for install, so install to slash opt or home slash pi slash opt. I, I'm i gonna go for just slash opt uh, because that's kind of like more of a root file. It's gonna ask for things. Would you like to add desktop integration? Uh, that means that there's gonna be a nice little button in the kind of the start menu -y type thing. So yes, please. Would you like to symlink? Yeah, sure. 
proceed with installation. Yes. Installation complete. Done. So if we close that terminal down, we should find now uh, sound and video. Reaper is in our start menu, top left. So if I click that open, oh, look, the familiar Reaper. So that's going to pop open. I can now full screen that. So here we are at the familiar Reaper setup. I can start adding channels in there. If I was just mixing here, I could set up my audio device. Uh, which you can see me do in the Reaper 101 Basics tutorial that I did. Uh, if you've not checked that out already, please do. Uh, so we'll be choosing input devices and output devices here, I'm sure. And then we'll be hitting OK. Uh, we'll work out the finer details. I'm going to do a second follow-up video on this. Uh, but before we do... Let's just close Reaper down and let's just try something that that's installed. We don't need that folder anymore. I'm going to try something, which is I'm going to try and plug in my audience ID four. this is a bus powered interface. It plugs in via USB and that powers it. So I don't know if there's going to be enough power available on the Raspberry Pi to do this. If not, we'll have to find a way around this, but let's see if this works. So I'll plug that in and it's clicked at me. The status on it is green. Let's just have a look. Ah, so if I right click on the sound up here, I can see ID4. So if I look at sound card ID4, select controls. Internal clock validity. I don't know what that's all about, but the ID4 seems to have plugged in okay. So if I go back to Reaper, let's just see if I can select an audio device. I think ALSA is what we want to be using. So if we use input as ID4, output ID4, bit depth. 24 bit is what I want to be using and hit OK. I just heard my ID4 go crunchy click. If I hit play, we're off. So if I was to download something and play it there, I think I'd be able to hear it in my, uh, let's just try that. I'm just going to go and let's just have a look at effects and see because it comes with all of the uh, JS plugins all of the Reaper Cocos VSTs they're all included so if you've ever seen me or anybody else mixing with Reaper's stock stock plugins they're all here if I go to re synth pretty sure if I added in a MIDI, so if I go to insert new MIDI item and make sure monitoring is on and open that up and just, yeah, so I can see, I can see MIDI doing things here. So it's not particularly pretty, but if I just loop that. I'll get the sound working in the next video because if I loop that, I can see it. I mean, look, if you can see that on the front of the ID4, that sound there in Reaper, the synth, is coming out of the interface. So if I were to stick headphones in it, we'll wire this up properly next time, but if I, if I plug that in and... So that is Reaper making sound with a relatively low latency, which I think we can adjust and play with. So where it says 512 samples, I bet I can get that down like 128 because it's class compliant. Yeah, so 2.9 millisecond, 8.5 millisecond latency.
yeah, it's it's getting used to it now. But that's that's some audio coming out at 128 sample latency on a tiny little Raspberry Pi. So that's step one. Next step is going to be, we're going to make a video where I'm going to do a bit more in-depth investigation into plugins because any plugins that you use for Windows or OS X won't work straight off the bat, but they may be able to work if we can either find a Linux version or if we can find a way to get them to work. So I hope you enjoyed this video and like I said, ladies and gentlemen, Reaper working on the Raspberry Pi with all its plugins and all that kind of stuff ready, going, working. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, stay tuned to the channel for more audio production uh, videos. We do a lot of gear reviews. We're talking about things soon like stereo subwoofers in a recording studio. Uh, we talk a lot about virtual guitar amps, real guitar amps, uh, modeling and all that kind of stuff, uh, live sound tips. And I want to say a big thank you to our patrons on Patreon who help us to do these kind of videos because your support means an absolute load to us so if you've not checked out our patreon already that's a way that you can help us back out in return for doing all these kind of videos because we do have you know bills to pay and it really helps us out so thank you everybody for supporting and thank you everyone for watching i'm adam Steele for hot pole studios and i'll see you in the next video goodbye Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.